What's up guys, it's Courtney. I hope you all had a good holiday. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They make it super easy to upload your music and to promote your music on streaming platforms. For only $19.99 a year, you can release unlimited music and they make it super easy to upload and super easy to promote. They also have a feature in there where you can collaborate very easily and get your payments split across the board if you're working with other producers, songwriters, or artists. So if you want to find out more about DistroKid, hit the link in my bio to get 7% off of your first year. I would not recommend this if I didn't wholeheartedly believe in it, but yes, DistroKid is my favorite distribution service, so be sure to check it out if you're trying to get your music on Spotify, Apple, Tidal, and everywhere else. But more on this video, I saw that a lot of you wanted a tutorial on how to use the machine the same way that I use the Akai MPK Mini. So today's video is going to show you how to use the machine within Logic Pro. It's a lengthy video, I know. So if you need to take some notes, grab a piece of paper and a pencil and let's go. So the first step that we need to take is plugging our machine into the computer using the USB cable. And for this tutorial, I am using the machine MK3. Before we open up Logic, let's put our machine into MIDI mode. And you do that by holding shift and channel. Now your template isn't going to look like this because I programmed these things to control certain functions within Logic, but let's open up the Native Instruments Controller Editor. As you can see, my template is looking a lot different than what you probably have. You probably have an empty template like this, and don't worry, we can get you here if you just stick around. So let's go over to Logic, go to Logic Pro at the top, go to control surfaces, go to setup. Now we're going to go to new, install, and we're gonna scroll down until we find Mackie control. And that's right here. And all you have to do is hit add. And I already have this on here, so I'm not gonna add it again. So let me click this really quick. Now make sure your output port is on the machine MK3 virtual output and your input port is on the machine MK3 virtual input. Now we can exit out of that. Now we can start programming some of these pads and knobs on the machine and use them to control functions within Logic. So for example, I have these tools up here that I, these are my go-to, like this button changes the primary tool. So right now it's on the arrow. If I click this button, it will change to scissors. This will change it to the pin and this will change it to the marquee. Those are just like my go-to. Those are the things that I'm always using. So I program those to control uh, those functions within Logic. Now I also have it control the piano roll. So I can toggle on the piano roll. I can toggle on and off the mixer as well using that button. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of these and show you how to do it because this tutorial would be very lengthy if I did that, but I will show you how to control your transport controls and your toggling off your MIDI, your piano roll and your mixer. So let's go up here to Logic Pro, go to key commands, edit, now this could look intimidating, but what we really wanna focus on is this search bar right here. So for right now, let's just try to toggle on and off the mixer window. So we're gonna to go to this search bar and type in mixer. And if you see this show hide mixer, what we're gonna do is learn new assignment. And all we have to do is press that mixer button on the machine. And now it is programmed to pull up the mixer. We can exit out of that so I can show you. It'll just pull that right up. It's, it's very, very easy. So let's do another one. Go to key commands, edit. Let's do the piano roll. Again, show hide piano roll, learn new assignment. Click that arranger button. Now we can exit out of that again and push the arranger button and now you can see it toggles on and off the piano roll. You'll probably want your transport controls more than anything, so you can easily turn off your loops, start the record, stop the record, and play. So let me show you how to do that. Go back to Logic Pro, key commands, edit, back up here to the search bar. Let's type in 
play. Now, as you can see this play right here, all we have to do is learn new assignment and hit the play button. Now we can exit out of that and hit play and it will play the record. Now you do that for all of your transport control functions. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of those, but like I said, Logic Pro, key commands, edit. Let's do one last one. Let's do uh, the metronome. Let's toggle on and off the metronome. We're gonna program that one to this events button. I just typed in metro, toggle metronome, click, learn new assignment, hit events, wait for it to load, exit out. Now, as you can see, it's turning on and off the metronome. Now we're gonna dive into the drum machine designer so that we can use our pads as a drum machine within Logic, but not as the machine. So let's go over here to the empty drum machine designer kit that I have set up. What you wanna make sure you do is put all of these pads to these notes. So let's open up the drum machine designer, go to instrument, scroll down until you see drum machine designer. And as you see right here at the bottom, it says C1, C sharp one, D1, D sharp one. So these pads all match these pads. Now, if you wanted to, you could change the pads within Logic, but I found it easier to change the pad notes within machine to match this. So if I were to drag and drop some sounds, I will show you that these work on individual kits. All right, so now if I hit these pads, they will all trigger the sounds within Logic. And if you recall in the Akai video, I showed you how to toggle the modulation to control the note repeat function within Logic. I'm gonna show you how to do that with this mod strip right here. So double click this mod right here and make sure you're on channels two, number one, mode, toggle, zero to 127. You can change this if you want. Like if you want your hi-hat to be at around 80 velocity to 110 velocity, you could do that so that the hi-hats don't go too low. Now we go back over to Logic, hit this toolbar to expand it, hit the note repeat, Pull it up really quick, expand this by hitting this little arrow. Check the modulation wheel right here. Now let's change this down to 1 8th notes to 164 notes. So if I hit this three pad, it's going to play at a rate about 1 8th note. And then as I progressively move up the modulation strip, it will increase that hi-hat roll rate. I also have another way to do the note repeat and that's by programming the note repeat button on the machine to the built-in arpeggiator within Logic. So go to Logic Pro, key commands, edit, type in arpeggiator. You'll see toggle channel strip arpeggiator. All we have to do is click that, learn new assignment, press the button on the machine. All right, exit out. And I wanna put it on the hi-hat, so I'm gonna go and expand this little kit right here, go down to the hi-hat, and once I press this note repeat button, this MIDI effects will turn into an arpeggiator. As you can see, it just came up, and now when we press a pad, the arpeggiator will create that hi-hat roll. Now the difference here is you're going to have to program this knob to one of the knobs on the machine. So the best way to do that is move this really quick, go back up to Logic Pro, go to Control Surfaces and learn Assignment for Rate. And once you do that, just toggle this little knob right here, exit out. And now you can see that this knob controls the rate. So for example, It's not as clean as using the modulation strip, but it is another way that you can do a note repeat function using the machine. All right, so now let's talk about using the machine as a plugin within Logic, but the machine stays in MIDI mode. Let's open up machine right here. Machine two, make sure you select multi output. 
we have the machine software opened. You can see it put it back in machine mode. So let's put it into MIDI mode by hitting shift and channel. All right, so let's load a little kit really quick. I'm going to use the new machine expansion, Soul Magic. All right, I have a kit loaded up, but there are a few things that we have to do before we can actually use this. The first thing we need to do is go to sound, click this icon right here change the destination to one for pad one, uh, two for pad two, three for pad three, so on and so forth. Do this until you get all the way to pad 16. Once you have that set up, go ahead and hit this plus icon until you get all 16 tracks. Now you're going to select all of these pads by holding down shift and scrolling from pad one to 16 and change this key mode to drum kit. You do that by going to group and input and MIDI and you hit drum kit. Now when I hit the pad, it will play each individual sound within that kit. And as you can see, each sound is on their own track. So it makes it super easy to mix this way. Now, if you don't feel like going through that every time you want to make a beat using machine this way, make sure to go to file and save as template. That way you won't have to create this setup every single time you make a beat using machine as a plugin within Logic. Now, if you're the person that likes to make your beats within the machine software standalone, but likes to mix in a different DAW, let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna just open up another kit that already has a pattern already laid down. So let's go back into Soul Magic, click one of these kits. As you can see, it already has a project. All right, so the best way to do this, to export this project into audio files or stems or track outs or whatever you'd like to call them, is go to File, Export Audio, and make sure that you have all of your scenes and you wanna do it by sound. This will put them into individual tracks. So we're gonna put these sounds into a machine tutorial folder. Hit create, choose. I'm going to name this machine tutorial. These are WAV files, 16 bit at 44 Hertz. So export. Now that we have logic opened, open up this folder with the stems. And as you can see, each individual sound has its own file. So let's select all these. And all you have to do is drag them into logic. And the machine project tempo was at 120, so we don't need to change that within Logic. But if your project tempo is different than the Logic default, make sure that you change your tempo here. These were all four bar loops, so let's just select all of these and drag them to four bars. I'm going to go to the mixer really quick and bring down these levels so it doesn't blast our speakers. Now when I hit play, you'll be able to hear each individual sound. And then you would do your mixing and your EQing all right here in Logic and you could have your arrange window if this is the preferred method for you. I hope this video was helpful for you all and if you do have any comments or suggestions, leave those in the comment section below so I can see them and answer them if you have any concerns as well. If you did like this video, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm so we can continue to grow the channel. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button as well as that little bell so you get a notification every single time I post. But I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.